Hi and welcome to the first in a series of tutorials on the new features in Sony Vegas Pro 11. This is a major release from Sony Creative Software and we are proud to bring this to you courtesy of Streaming Media Producer. Today we're going to talk about an improvement that's been made to many of the video plugins whereby you can now keyframe several of the individual parameters. This adds greater dimension to Vegas Pro, so let's check it out. Before we discuss some of the new things with keyframing, I'm going to take just a moment and explain what keyframing is in case you're not familiar with that term. Keyframing is just events that happen over time. Douglas Spotted Eagle illustrates this pretty well in his new Vegas 11 book that comes out in April. And he equates it to your timeline of the day. So for example, at 6 o'clock, you get up. 6.30, you take a shower. 7 o'clock, you go to work. All these things happen over time. And you'll see how that translates into Vegas, into effects, and the changing of parameters for effects, or in our case, we're gonna do this on a title. To illustrate the new keyframing by parameter capabilities, we're gonna use the one of the titlers that's in Vegas 11. So right click and say, insert text media. And this comes up with the new Sony Titles and Text plugin. It used to be the old legacy titler, now it's the Sony Titles and Text. So I'm going to bring this down because pretty much today we're only concerned about what's in the preview window and then what's in our plugin. So I'm going to kind of rearrange my workspace here to um, let us see both of those a little bit more on the screen. We'll change our text to be Rigging the ropes. Center that. And play through the timeline. Got a basic title on the screen. Nothing too special there. So let's see what, what this new keyframe and by parameter stuff is all about. I'm going to bring this down so we see more of the plugin. Now you'll notice we have some new buttons on the screen. These new clock face buttons here are for animation. And you'll notice that pretty much all of our parameters have an animate button. Click on the advanced. We've got a couple more here. And what these do when you click on them, let's click on one for scale here. It brings up a new timeline in our plugin. Now we have an outer entry here called titles and text. If you had multiple plugins and you wanted to animate elements of those plugins, you would see an entry for each one of your plugins kind of at this outer layer. And when we click on the details, for each of our parameters that we choose to animate, you'll see a new entry down here for, those, for that animation. But for right now, let's just stick with scale. It's very important to turn on sync cursor to media timeline when you're doing this type of work because that way no matter where you are in either timeline either the plug-in or on the Vegas timeline itself they'll stay in sync with each other so we want to start with the first keyframe and if you haven't added any animation to any parameter as you see in the timeline here there's no other keyframe so that's all you'll have now on that first keyframe let's bring our scale out until our text is off the screen, or because of the placement of our text, that's as far off the screen as we're gonna get. This is where we start. So let's move forward in time just a little bit. And as we move our scale slider, you'll see that the text moves near and far. And you'll also see that our rubber band and our keyframe moves up and down. So let's move it until the text is on the screen at about what we think is the right point, which is about right there. And then we'll shift B to render this event to RAM and see what that looks like. And you see the text kind of pushes on screen. Now, if we wanted that to, to appear on screen faster, we can just click and drag our keyframe more towards the beginning of the event. Let's render that to RAM and see what that looks like. And you'll see that pops on screen really fast. And that's what I want, so let's keep it right there. All right, 
So that's our scale. That's been uh, animated. Let's animate something else. Let's click on the advanced uh, button and come down to our tracking. Here's our animate button here. We'll click that. It brings up a new timeline, a new rubber band for the tracking parameter. So let's start after it fully appears on screen. Now notice that if we just start manipulating the slider, that we start affecting the tracking from the very beginning of the event. And we don't want that. We want the text to appear fully on screen first. So our second keyframe is going to be the exact same as the first. That way the tracking is held through the entire time that the text appears on screen. Once it's appeared on screen, we'll add another keyframe here and we'll adjust our tracking. Let's bring it out. Let's go a little bit further in time. Let's bring it back. A little further in time. Let's bring it in. A little further in time. And we'll bring it back. One of the handiest little tricks to know about Vegas, if you double click on the slider, on pretty much any slider, any control, in any plugin in Vegas, it will revert back to whatever the default setting is. And many times that's zero. In the case of line spacing, down here it's one because it, we're at a single line space. And most of your parameters, the, the default is gonna be zero or some low, some low number. So let's click on line spacing and we've added a new envelope, a new rubber band here and we'll do the same thing. We'll double click to set our second keyframe to be the same as the first because we don't want the effect to start until after the previous effect in tracking. Now you can choose anything that you want, but for the purpose of our example, to explain how this works, this is how we're doing this. So let's manipulate our line spacing slider. You can get kind of creative with it. You can add as many keyframes as you want. And finally, we'll wind up back at, back at square one. So let's do a shift B RAM render here and see what that looks like. Wow, that's a lot going on. So the next time you pull up a plugin via the video effect, a filter, the titling tool, I recommend you click on the animate button and, and just try out a few things. Take a few minutes on each one of the parameters and see what you can come up with. Thanks for watching. Experiment, be creative, and I'll see you next time.